Cassius has made a dreadful mess of this place, hasn't he? I didn't see this part of the castle. It was covered in the tackiest carvings of wolves and dogs I'd ever seen. This is not an improvement. Andraste blessed me, Andraste blessed me. My tears are my sins, my sins, my sins. Andraste guide me, Andraste guide me. What is the date? I need to know how much time has passed. Harvest Mia. 9.42 Dragon. 9.42? Then we've missed an entire year. We have to get out of here. Go back in time. Please, stop this from happening. Alexius serves the Elder One more powerful than the Maker. No one challenges him and lives. I promise, I will do everything in my power to set things right. Our only hope is to find the amulet that Alexius used to send us here. If it still exists, I can use it to reopen the rift at the exact spot we left. Maybe. Good. I said, maybe. It might also turn us into paste. You must... Try! Your spy master, Leliana. She is here. Find her. Quickly. Before the Elder One learns you're here. If 
red lyrium is an infection. Maker, why is it coming out of the walls? Are you sure you want to find out? Light shall lead her safely through the paths of this world and into the next. For she who trusts in the Maker, fire is her water. You've returned to us. Can it be? Has Andraste given us another chance? Maker, forgive me. I failed you. I failed everyone. The end must truly be upon us if the dead return to life. We're going to kill Alexius. Come with us. I don't understand. What use is there in fighting him now? Alexius sent us forward in time. If we find him, we may be able to return to the present. Go back in time? Then can you make it so that none of this ever took place? If Dorian is right, and can actually reverse the spell, then yes. Alexius is master. After you died, we could not stop the Elder One from rising. Empress Selene was murdered. The army that swept in afterwards, it was a horde of demons. Nothing stopped them. Nothing. We'll stop all that from happening. I promise. Maker, guide us all. Die. The spell Alexius cast displaced us in time. We just got here, so to speak. Can you reverse the process? You could return and obviate the events of the last year. It may not be too late. Dorian thinks we can go back to our own time if we find Alexius. That makes sense. He sent you. He would be the key. This world is an abomination. It must never come to pass. Alexius locked himself in the throne room. That is where we'll find him.
Elder One has taken all that is his, and will soon be Find peace at the Maker's side. Tell me how Lavella knew of the sacrifice at the temple. Never. Well, that was impressive. Anger is stronger than any pain. Do you have weapons? Good. The Magister's probably in his chambers. You aren't curious how we got here? No. Alexius sent us into the future. This, his victory, his Elder One, it was never meant to be. I need to find Alexius and reverse the spell. If we can get back to our present time, we can prevent this future from ever happening. And mages always wonder why people fear them. No one should have this power. It's dangerous and unpredictable. Before the breach, nothing we did. Enough. This is all pretend to you. Some future you hope will never exist. I suffered. The whole world suffered. It was real. What happened while we were away? Stop talking. I'm just asking for information. No, you're talking to Phil's silence. Nothing happened that you want to hear. We need to find Alexius. I'm sure he'll be in the nicer part of the castle, if there is one.
Magister needs more power for his rituals. No. Come forth and sir. Alexius can't have wanted this. Breach! It's everywhere. The veil is shattered. There is no boundary now between the world and the fate.
was an act of courage. He knew there was no other way to resist. What, what a terrible way. waste.
What became of Felix? Do you know? Yes, I know. And you're not going to tell me? You'll find out soon enough. Draste's name is that. Hold on to it. I want to look at it later. Alexius will likely be there. The elder one is interested in saving his followers.
Where did Alexius find this? How did he even move it here? Can we open it? Perhaps. But it looks quite strong. How desperate and paranoid must he be? The servants must have a way through. He has to eat. Let's look around. What happened here? Somebody had very questionable taste.
haven't seen us. We could take them by surprise. Kill the Enchanter! Head back to the main hall. I think I know how we'll open that door.
I was worried I'd have to search the whole castle for you, Alexius. There's no longer anywhere to run. I knew you would appear again. Not that it would be now, but I knew I hadn't destroyed you. My final failure. Was it worth it? Everything you did to the world, to yourself. It doesn't matter now. All we can do is wait for the end. It does matter. I will undo this. How many times have I tried? The past cannot be undone. All that I fought for, all that I betrayed, what have I wrought? Ruin and death, that is nothing else. The Elder One comes for me, for you, for us all. <sighs> Felix. That's Felix. Make his breath, Alexius. What have you done? He would have died, Dorian. I saved him. Please, don't hurt my son. I'll do anything you ask. Hand over the amulet and we let him go. Let him go and I swear you'll get what you want. I want the world back. <laughs> no. No! He wanted to die, didn't he? 
All those lies he told himself, the justifications. He lost Felix long ago. He didn't even notice. Oh, Alexius. This Alexius was too far gone. But the Alexius in our time might still be reasoned with. I suppose that's true. This is the same amulet he used before. I think it's the same one we made in Minrathus. That's a relief. Give me an hour to work out the spell he used, and I should be able to reopen the rift. An hour? That's impossible! You must go now! Not stay here. We'll hold the outer door. When they get past us, it'll be your turn. We'll make this count. The only way we live is if this day never comes. Cast your spell. You have as much time as I have arrows. Though darkness closes, I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die! <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. Put aside all claim to Redcliffe, and we let you live. You won. There is no point extending this charade. Felix. It's going to be all right, father. You'll die. Everyone dies. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Enchanter Fiona, Queen Anora. When I granted your mages sanctuary, I thought it was understood that they would not force my people from their homes. Your Majesty, let me assure you, we never intended any of this. Your intentions ceased to matter when my people were threatened. I am rescinding my offer of sanctuary. You and your followers will leave for Elden at once. But we have hundreds who need protection. Where will we go? The Inquisition might be willing to take in the mages. And what are the terms of this arrangement? Hopefully better than what Alexius gave you. The Inquisition is better than that, yes? I know you are a mage, but consider how these rebels have acted. They must be conscripted, not coddled. They have lost all possible supporters. The Inquisition is their only remaining chance for freedom. It seems we have little choice but to accept whatever you offer. We would be honored to have you fight as allies at the Inquisition's side. We'll discuss this later. I'll pray that the rest of the Inquisition honors your promise then. The breach threatens all of Thedas. We cannot afford to be divided now. We can't fight it without you. 
Any chance of success requires your full support. Whether you accept the Inquisition's alliance or not, you will leave my kingdom. We accept. It would be madness not to. I will gather my people and ready them for the journey to Haven. The breach will be closed. You will not regret giving us this chance. It's not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. We need them to close the breach. It's not gonna work if we make enemies of them. I know we need them for the breach, but they could do as much damage as the demons themselves. You were there, Seeker. Why didn't you intervene? While I may not completely agree with the decision, I support it. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the Mage's aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. And here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. I got a taste of the consequences if we fail. Let's make sure we don't. We will not fail. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinter cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. Thank you. I'd be honored to help with the plan. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're staying. Oh, didn't I mention? 
The South is so charming and rustic. I adore it to little pieces. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with, future or present. Excellent choice. But let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. appreciate your assistance in this matter, Lily. And my miners appreciate your business. Did you see the message I sent? Yes, thank you. To work? Let's see what we have. The best of the mages are ready, Harold. Be certain you are prepared for the assault on the breach. We cannot know how you will be affected. the Herald. Let his will draw from you.
Solus confirms the heavens are scarred by the calm. The breach is sealed. We have reports of lingering rifts, and many questions remain. But this was a victory. Word of your heroism has spread. You know how many were involved. Luck put me at the center. A strange kind of luck. I'm not sure if we need more or less. But you're right. This was a victory of Alliance, one of the few in recent memory. With the breach closed, that Alliance will need new focus. Forces approaching! To arms! What the...? We must get to the gates! This bodes poorly. Cullen? One watch guard reporting. It's a massive force, the bulk over the mountain. Under what banner? None. None? I can't come in unless you open. I'm Cole. I came to warn you, to help. People are coming to hurt you. You probably already know. What is this? What's going on? The Templars come to kill you. Templars? Is this the Order's response to our talks with the Majors, attacking blindly? The Red Templars went to the Elder One. You know him, he knows you. You took his Majors. There. This Elder One. He's very angry that you took his Majors. Cullen, give me a plan. Anything. Haven is no fortress. If we are to withstand this monster, we must control the battle. Get out there and hit that force. Use everything you can. Majors! You! You have sanctioned to engage them! That is Samson! He will not make it easy! Inquisition! With the Herald! For your lives! For all of us!
Everyone to the gates. Everyone back. 
back to the Chantry. It's the only building that might hold against that beast. At this point, just make them work for it. The people of Haven will not survive on their own. that?
another death I fear. The Inquisition appreciates your assistance in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your Illyrium by the end of the day. It is good to be surrounded by mages again.
Master wants to know if you have anything that can make tavern food taste a little more... I had some.
Have you seen the horses Master Dennett sent the Inquisition? They're magnificent. Better than what you ride in Arthur? Well... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you noble boys never trust it. Another time, then. Another time, then. something let me know you need something let me know something let me know another time then magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him foul and corrupt are they taken his gift and turned it against his children. They shall be named Malefica. Appreciate your existence in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. Master Dennett's horses are a fine addition to our stables. I will see they are well tended.
see what we have. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who was she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the dwarves to secure lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. Oh. Access to lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We're becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? Andraste's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. I suppose a shared faith can be useful when talking with strangers. Precisely. And these similar interests are merely where we begin. We must learn to think beyond our own wants to secure peace in Thedas. Planning to steer the history of the world, Ambassador Montillier? I believe the Inquisition is already charting that course. Which brings me to a question, if you have a moment. The remaining Grand Clerics sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the bridge. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I don't know if a miracle from Andraste saved me any more than they do. Yet as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. Thank you. Hello? Can I help you with something? I'll speak with you later. Travel safely. Greetings. What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. We must aim for more. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? Lady Drummond promised a visit. She has useful resources if we can get her to set aside her games. What are her politics? Oh. No, I meant actual games. A chess, cards, dice, little boards with carved idols from Tevinter. She made me play that with her for eight hours once. Steer her towards cards, if she insists on a match. I understand you were instrumental in garnering the assistance of the rebel mages. It is well done. And I pray this Inquisition fares better than the Chantry in its handling of magic. We will try. In some ways, Andraste had the simpler task. Magic should serve man, and not rule over him. That tells us what should be, but it does not tell us how to get there. So many times the methods of men have undone the spirit of their goals. 
Once you have sealed the breach, we shall see whether this Inquisition is truer to the Chantry or its own namesake. Farewell. Farewell. Ages. Lovely. They should have this brick. It seems Blackwall knows nothing about the disappearance of the Grey Wardens. It's a disappointment. I am, however, glad that he is with us. Even if he was not what I expected. He seems to be a good man, and his experience will be an asset to the Inquisition. <sighs> As for the other Wardens, I suppose we will have to keep looking. In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice, and still noble. And I would do it again. Anything I should know? Altegan has returned to Redcliffe Castle and resumed his duties as lord. The people are returning, slowly but surely. Unfortunately, our show of support for the mages has angered many. Anything I should know? I have nothing to report at the moment. I'll leave you to your work. Apothecary Adon says... Can I help you with something? Farewell. Make a go. If Segra can get what I need, I'll pay the bastard myself. You're back. And in one piece. Farewell. So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel. Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade. Dorian was sure, impossible as it seems. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeed to avoid the future you witness. I'm surprised you're not more interested in your own future. I know enough. 
If that future happened, then I and Cassandra, Cullen and the rest failed to stop this Elder One. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One? You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Hallam Shiral? Cows milking farmers? I take it you don't agree? On the contrary, I approve. Heartily. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For majors in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern majors license to, well, be like majors back home. What would be wrong with that exactly? Nothing, at first. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the South. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed by inches. Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. I'd like to ask you about Tavinta. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? Just how often is blood magic used there? Oh, not at all. Not at all. That's what any Magister would tell you. They'd be convincingly offended by the notion, too. Of course, what people call blood magic here, and what we consider blood magic, are two different things. What's considered actual blood magic in Tevinter? Blood magic isn't inherently dangerous. Using your own blood or that of a willing participant, what's the harm? The problem is that what's permitted only gets you so much power. And what if you need more? You always need more. That's where we get into sacrifices and demon summoning. None of that is done. Not officially. Behind closed doors, it's a different story. Real blood magic can give you an edge, a leg up against your opponents. It's safe to assume that any mage of rank does it. The rest are quietly shut out of power, to put it bluntly. You'd think the Templars would object. I imagine they did, long ago. Once, their investigations might have been sincere. Then their balls were cut off. Too inconvenient. Nowadays, only the friendless are accused. And most of them are probably innocent. There must be some mages who oppose this. Of course. I do. And I'm not entirely alone. Occasionally, there'll be a magister who makes noise. And then the reform talk begins. All very patriotic. Meanwhile, that magister will be quietly shunned. Chances are, surprise, it's learned he was a Maleficar all along. Most learned to keep quiet. Me? <laughs> I enjoy the allure of pariahood. Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah. That is true. And? Did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. I'm not even certain many slaves do. You think slaves like it that way? Don't be ridiculous. I didn't say they like it. It's all most of them know. In the south, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? I suppose not, no. I don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. 
I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the norm. It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. Strange? Why are you less qualified to rule than some tart with a fancy crown? <laughs> Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later, lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soparati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families buy madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Tevinter legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Poor sods don't realize that means he'll be a Quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a Quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With its own Divine? You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Chantry. Or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them, for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The Circles are in command. There are Circles of Magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They don't use Lyrian. Ha! As if there'd be any left for them. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce the Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman, a mage. 
down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andreste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the south declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So the imperial divine is always a man. All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the south. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I share your opinion, actually. That's not surprising, considering what the Inquisition represents. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. I'm not sure about that myself. Doubt is good. I like doubt. It will keep you sane. Me? I've seen too much to believe I know everything. The world is bigger than I. Even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe. But I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. I'm wondering if the Imperium would be a useful ally. I think you'd be more concerned whether or not they'd support the Venatori. They won't. At least, not officially. They'll disavow all knowledge of dangerous cultists. Secretly, many Magisters will rejoice at the idea. And if the South falls to chaos in the meantime, all the better. It would be in the Imperium's best interest to help. Surely it could use allies. I think the Imperium gave up on the idea of allies a long time ago. We've been fighting the Canari for what? 200 years off and on? It's a point of pride that we go it alone. They'll sneer at the South behind their silk handkerchiefs and say, you've had it easy for far too long. Let's not forget that the Inquisition seems to be an arm of the Olesian Chantry. Anathema so far as they're concerned. We're not part of the Chantry. The Chantry opposed the Inquisition's formation. You think that matters? Don't be silly. The Herald of Andraste. Your very title smacks of the Southern Chantry. You may as well be a heathen. I think they're far more frightened what you'll do if you succeed. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinter, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. You certainly think highly of yourself. It's true. I could be more modest, but I'd be lying. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinter in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. What do you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Tevinter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Be 
because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems so much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Devinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Devinter? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters, I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Devinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree, but that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked despondent, broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. We can't leave a single piece of that Lyrium out in the wild. I'm with you on that. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? That's a good point. We should celebrate. A banquet. Something like a banquet. A word to Josephine, and I bet she could arrange anything. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. Need something? Carry on.
those who steal from their brothers and sisters do harm to their livelihood and to their peace of mind. Our maker sees this with a heavy heart. Until later. The Herald of Andraste is getting close to breach, sir. Not a moment to fill. Sir. Just tired, boy. Spent half my life building siege. Got the door again, Blissa. Don't know how it keeps breaking. See reason, listen. Word is that we cannot the stay will here. be joining us here in Haven. I hope you've chosen your allies wisely, Harold. I will talk to you later. Walk in the Maker's grace. The mages are ready to approach the breach. I pray this will be enough to close it. I know you're worried about having the mages here. Give them a chance to prove themselves. Now, I'm not questioning their ability or their intentions, but we cannot ignore the risks. I will not endanger the alliance you've created. We need their help. Any precautions taken will be to ensure the safety of our people and the mages themselves. Nothing more. Is there anything I should know? Not at present. That's all for now. Another time, then. And what are we supposed to do, exactly? What you always do. Complain. We've already spoken with Commander Cullen. No one listens. We want better quarters. We want the Templars kept at a distance. And some respect for... This is not the Circle. You mages are our allies, not our wards. Act like it. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends, evidently. Is there an issue with the mages? Can I help? The mages are here as equals. They need to get used to what that means. It is your doing, after all. You created this alliance. Well, I hope it works. What other choice do we have? Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. We wouldn't be here at all if you hadn't stood up against the Chantry. You're being kind. You're discounting your role in this. Let's close the breach. Then we can say how successful I was. Greetings. That's enough for now.
Goodbye. Right. You need something, let me know.
Master Lavellen, on behalf of the Inquisition. A pleasure, sir. We so rarely have a chance to meet anyone new. It is always the same crowd at these parties. So you must be a guest of Madame de Fer. Or are you here for Duc Bastien? Are you here on business? I have heard the most curious tales of you. I cannot imagine half of them are true. What have you heard about me? Some say that when the veil opened, Andraste herself delivered you from the fate. I'm not familiar with that name. I was invited here by first enchanter Vivienne. Madame de Fer is a fond nickname the court has given Lady Vivienne. I've heard she finds it amusing. I've heard very little about Duke Bastien. He hasn't been seen much at court lately. His business with the Council of Heralds often takes him from home for long periods. It can't be good for a man of his years. And of course, there's the civil war. Bastien probably wishes to distance himself from the actions of his one-time son-in-law. Tearing up the Dales in a foolish bid for power? It will end in disgrace for Gaspar. Everyone knows it. Some of those storytellers may have gotten carried away. But only for the best effect. The Inquisition is a ripe subject for wild tales. The Inquisition. What a lot of pig shit. Washed up sisters and crazed seekers. No one can take them seriously. Everyone knows it's just an excuse for a bunch of political outcasts to grab power. I saved the city of Redcliffe and brought the mages to order. Saving dog lords and bringing their beasts to heal is hardly an accomplishment. We know what your Inquisition truly is. If you were a man of honor, you'd step outside and answer the charges. My dear Marquis, how unkind of you to use such language in my house to my guests. You know such rudeness is intolerable. Uh, Madame Vivienne, I humbly beg your pardon. You should. Whatever am I going to do with you, my dear? My lord, you're the wounded party in this unfortunate affair. What would you have me do with this foolish, foolish man? I think the Marquis has seen the error of his ways. By the grace of Andraste, you have your life, my dear. Do be more careful <laughs> with it. I'm delighted you could attend this little gathering. I've so wanted to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vivienne. First Enchanter of Mont Simard, an Enchantress to the Imperial Court. Is that Marquis going to pose a problem? His aunt is the Vicomtesse of Mont de Glace. Not a powerful family, but well respected. And very devout. Alphonse will be disowned for this. It's not the first time he's brought his aunt disgrace, but I'm sure it'll be the last. And after such a public humiliation, I expect he'll run off to the Dales to join the Empress's war effort. Either to make a good end, or to win back a modicum of self-respect. Charmed, Lady Vivian. Ah, but I didn't invite you to the Chateau for pleasantries. With Divine Justinia dead, the Chantry's in shambles. And you seem to have won over the fractious rebel mages. I didn't think such a thing was possible. As the leader of the last loyal mages of Thedas, I feel it only right that I lend my assistance to your cause. Is your interest in the Inquisition Madame de Fer, or is it more personal? <laughs> Aren't 
aren't you charming? <laughs> it's professional, of course. What exactly can you do for the Inquisition? I am well versed in the politics of the Orlesian Empire. I know every member of the Imperial Court personally. I have all the resources remaining to the Circle at my disposal. And I'm a mage of no small talent. Will that do? Does that mean you'd be aiding the Inquisition from the Imperial Palace? Ordinarily, I would be happy to serve as liaison to the court, but these are not ordinary times. The veil has been ripped apart and there is a hole in the sky. It is now the duty of every mage to work towards sealing the breach. And so I would join the Inquisition on the field of battle. You say you led the last of the loyal mages. Loyal to whom? To the people of Thedas, of course. We have not forgotten the commandment, as some have, that magic exists to serve man. I support any effort to restore such order. You don't care much for the rebels, I take it. Are you aware they've been offered an alliance? With proper guidance from the Inquisition, I think my colleagues will return to their senses. Surely they will have to realize that their rebellion endangers everyone. What's in this for you? The same thing anyone gets by fighting this chaos. The chance to meet my enemy, to decide my fate. I won't wait quietly for destruction. Are you devout? What's your opinion of the Chantry? I was a great admirer of the late divine Justinia V. The Chantry, at its best, unites the disparate cultures of Thedas and looks after its most vulnerable. Had she lived, Justinia could have accomplished so much. You are aware that the Chantry hasn't sanctioned this Inquisition? The Chantry is leaderless. They're in no position to officially sanction anything. Besides, my dear, if there is one virtue the Chant of Light teaches us, it is forgiveness. Once the Inquisition has sealed the breach, I'm sure the new Divine will not care in the slightest about official permission. The Inquisition will be happy to have you, Lady Vivian. Great things are beginning, my dear. I can promise you that.
and you've heard nothing Make of her, this. though the darkness comes upon me. I shall embrace the light. I shall weather the storm. Needed. No one can tear us in. Chota, if you're free later, would you like to have a drink? If Fiona and her malcontents are joining us as allies, we need to be prepared. Abominations are inevitable. Cullen doesn't have enough Templars to handle incidents. Some of the rank and file need to be trained. We can handle the mages. There's no need for Templars. Have any of these men faced an abomination before, my dear? Have you? The veil is broken, and the raw power of the Fade rushes out like floodwaters through a shattered levee. You know as well as I do that mages attract demons where the veil is thin. And if demons can walk our world with no blood magic to summon them, how safe do you think our allies are? There has never been a greater threat to mages than the Breach. Until it is closed, no one is safe. You have a low opinion of your fellow mages? It's not so much an opinion as grasping the obvious. Magic is dangerous, just as fire is dangerous. Anyone who forgets this truth gets burned. You're right, but Templars are a poor solution. They are men, and all men are flawed. That some fail does not mean that none should try. The fact remains that there is no cure for an abomination except death. Someone must strike the killing blow. Who shall lower the blade if not a Templar? Tell me something. As you will no doubt have a hand in shaping it, what future do you see for mages? Mages shouldn't be kept out of the Chantry. Who knows the dangers of magic better than a mage? A curious idea. Such twists and turns your mind takes. It's something to consider, my dear. You've never been to a circle, as far as I can tell, yet you're remarkably skilled. Were you self-taught? Not at all. I studied magic with Keeper Deshana. I have heard about the traditions of magic among the Dalish Keepers, but it's all third-hand. In my own experience, nothing is more deadly to a young mage than a lack of knowledge. Which makes the current state of things... precarious. What do you imagine will happen if the Circles are not restored? Do you foresee the Dalish taking us all under their wing? I don't like the war either. But Templars won't listen to reason. Well, on that, we agree. Justinia's death has shattered the balance of power in Thedas. If it is not restored quickly, countless lives will be lost. Mages, Templars, innocent people of all kinds now look to the Inquisition to decide their fate. I'll try not to let them down. Failure is a luxury we cannot afford, my dear. For almost a thousand years, the world believed it was in the hands of the Maker. And now many believe you are the agent of his will. Whatever the truth is, that belief gives you power. Once this is over, the task of speaking for the Maker will be the Chantry's problem again. That's reassuring to hear. I've stolen enough of your time, my dear. Don't let me keep you. Yes? I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. 
I have known some who were impossible to endure, and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor, but no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royale. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. If the Circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The Circle is an idea, my dear. And an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. If you lead all the loyalists, why are you only First Enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different. Their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content. Some were cruel, some compassionate, and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. So tell me about your personal experience with the Circle. I enjoyed life in the Montsimard Circle, my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And there is comfort to be had, you know, in the company of fellow mages. Those born without magic will never truly understand us. You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I have never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the First Enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. But Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? 
By all means, protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. Yes? Do you think that you and I might someday... How very sweet of you to ask, but no. Yes? I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivienne. Whatever would you like to know? Your accent's not Orlesian. Where exactly are you from? I am from the Circle, my dear. One's country of origin rarely matters there. But if you must know, I was born in Wycombe in the Free Marches. I was sent to the Ostwick Circle, but I transferred to Mont-Simar while still an apprentice. I'm curious how a Circle mage winds up a courtier. Nobody winds up at court, my dear. It takes a great deal of effort to arrive there. I caught the eye of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine, an advantageous connection that opened many doors. When the position of Enchanter to the Imperial Court became vacant, I was able to secure it. You're married to the Duke de Ghislaine? <laughs> of course not, my dear. Don't be ridiculous. Marriage is the business of alliance and inheritance. I'm Bastien's mistress. What duties does a court enchanter have? I am tasked with providing assistance to the Empress on arcane matters. Most of my predecessors restricted this to lighting lamps and doing parlor tricks. In such troubled times as these, however, I provide political advice to Her Majesty on the subject of the Mage Rebellion. Yes? Is there anything I can do to help your efforts at restoring the Circle? After the Circles fell, their libraries were plundered by scavengers. A thousand years of recorded knowledge in the hands of bandits. It makes me sick to think of it. I've received news that some tomes have been located, if you are interested in writing this wrong. I'll look into it for you. If you can take care of this matter, the Circle would be in your debt. <laughs>